Mike Fossum will be aggressing the airlock first, wearing the red stripes, and uh, Ron Guerin uh, will be EV2 for the EVA. The first thing that Mike will do is head up to the external stowage platform number two. Here's the location of the two Colt tools on the back of the LAPA or that uh, pallet that the pump module is installed on. While Mike is working on uh, installing the Colt tools, Ron will be uh, installing the foot restraint onto the robotic arm and then ingressing that foot restraint and getting into position to hold on to the handrails that are on the uh, pallet portion of the pump module assembly. Uh, Mike will come over and drive the primary bolt to release it. You can see here in the NBL uh, the relative size of um, the uh, pump module assembly relative to the crew member. Ron will move uh, on the arm out over the starboard just a little bit over the other ORUs that are on the ESP2 and then rotate it around to begin getting it into position where it can be docked down into the payload bay. You'll see another maneuver a little bit later. Once he's on his way to the payload bay, Mike packs up his tool bag and heads down uh, show, uh, to the payload bay uh, following the path shown flashing here in blue. You'll notice it's kind of a tight translation path between the GEM module and the MPLM that's docked for the mission. He'll maneuver down into the payload bay, translating to the aft of the payload bay. Uh, while Ron comes on the uh, robotic arm down into position carrying the pump module. That pump module is about 1,400 pounds. He'll have to make uh, one more flip of the payload before he can bring it down into the payload bay because as you can see, the arm is going to turn him upside down in order to get into position to berth the pump module into the payload bay. And then they're going to be trading out positions. Mike and Ron both wanted to have a chance to share the workload and to have a chance to ride on the robot arm. So uh, Ron will egress the arm and Mike will get on and then maneuver down into the bottom of the payload bay to retrieve the RRM payload from underneath the cross bay carrier as they monitor those clearances and fly the robot arm from the payload bay back over to the lab nader where the Dexter arm is waiting to uh, receive the uh, RRM. Uh, during the stage, the Dexter arm, uh, Dexter uh, and the space station robot arm will take that uh, payload out to its final location. Once they're uh, maneuvered over to the lab, um, Ron will translate uh, back up out of the payload bay, uh, bring the tools with him, and meet Mike up at the uh, lab on the Dexter. He'll assist with uh, docking the RRM to the Dexter. Mike will uh, fly on the uh, robot arm with Sandy and Doug driving the arm back over to the ESP2 where he can clean up the arm, putting the foot restraint back onto the ESP2, uh, removing the uh, 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 worksite adapter for the foot restraint, and then cleaning up uh, any other uh, tools that they may have left on the uh, ESP2 as well as reinstalling the gap spanner. While he's cleaning up the uh, SSRMS, Ron will be making his way back to the airlock, uh, trading out uh, one tool bag for another and picking up the uh, Ormate tool bag. That uh, uh, tool bag also contains a camera that they'll be using while they're out on the uh, external logistics carrier number two. You can see his translation path here out to the S3 element. Uh, and he'll be uh, translating up to the external logistics carrier number two. He'll temp stow his crew lock bag and then get in position to install the ore mate. Uh, you'll also hear us referring to that payload as the uh, mini Missy. You remove the uh, cover from the uh, experiment package and then uh, take photos of the material samples that are on the payload itself. Here's a photo showing you all of the small little materials exposure samples. Uh, all of those uh, experiments will be used on future satellite applications as well as in exploration. 
He'll also take uh, photos from the other side of the LC2 to make sure he's got both, photo, uh, both sides of the payload uh, documented in their initial configuration. That payload will be retrieved uh, on a later mission uh, late next year. From there, we'll move on to our get-aheads. This shows the general location on the Zarya where the power and data grapple fixture, or the PDGF, was installed on STS-134. We'll show you uh, what we're uh, hoping to clear. You can see that small white wire circled there. After that, we'll be going on to install the uh, pressurized mating adapter cover. The open end of it sees a lot of sun in this orientation. You can see an uh, NBL video of the cover that we've developed. It'll be carried to the work site in a special bag, uh, carried out by the uh, crew members, and then installed using some Velcro straps around the handrails on the what I'll call the snout of the PMA. I'm gonna go get some more.